Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 3rd of June. Cyclone Nisarg makes landfall in India's Maharashtra coastal districts on high alert. India's foreign ministry says UN report proves Pakistan is epicenter of global terrorism. And Kathmandu gets a glimpse of Mount Everest as pollution levels decrease amid lockdown. Now for all the details, Cyclone Nisarq, which intensified into a severe cyclonic storm in the Arabian Sea, made landfall along India's western coast on Wednesday afternoon. Strong winds due to the cyclonic storm uprooted trees and electric poles in several parts of Maharashtra province. There were, however, no casualties till the last reports came in. Cyclone Nisarg, which intensified into a severe cyclonic storm in the Arabian Sea, made landfall along India's western coast on Wednesday afternoon. Nisarg dropped heavy rains and winds gusting up to 75 miles per hour near the coastal town of Ali Bagh, about 60 miles south of Mumbai, the capital of Maharashtra province. Soon after the landfall process started, Several incidents of trees and electric poles getting uprooted due to strong winds were reported from multiple locations in Mumbai. National Disaster Response Force or NDRF said 43 teams were deployed in Maharashtra and neighboring Gujarat province to help in the relief and rescue operations. The cyclone has uh, hit the Ratnagiri coast and the Sindhudur coast in terms of high speed winds and uh, waves, high waves. The landfall uh, is almost approximately at the same place as predicted by the IMD, which is slightly south of Alibag in the Raigad district of Maharashtra. Maharashtra and Gujarat had moved thousands of people living near coastal areas to places of shelter and activated their disaster response mechanism in view of the impending adverse weather. Last month, a super cyclone that tore through India's eastern provinces of Odisha and West Bengal killed more than 80 people. India on Wednesday reported the highest single-day spike of 8,909 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, two days after the lockdown measures were considerably eased and the economy began to reopen. However, according to Health Ministry, India's recovery rate has improved to 48.31%, while fatality rate has dropped to 2.80%. The Indian Council of Medical Research, or ICMR, on Wednesday said a total of 137,158 samples were tested in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of tests to 4,103,233 in the country. The government has ramped up testing infrastructure amid rising cases. India registered its highest single-day spike of COVID-19 cases on Wednesday, with 8,909 new infections reported in the last 24 hours, taking the country's tally to 207,615, while the death toll rose to 5,815. India's health ministry said that recovery rate is progressively increasing, and has reached 48.19% amongst coronavirus patients. No panic is not necessary to be panicked. And the government has been prepared for it. We have all the facilities that we have prepared for the testing of the test. It has been increased and has been increased by the cause of it. I believe that in the coming days, we will be able to get rid of it. Meanwhile, as the economy has begun reopening after a lockdown imposed in March, challenges like overcrowding and hygiene concerns linger. Markets in several parts of the country have opened up for public in the first phase of unlock plan. 
India's Interior Ministry in its new guidelines has said that there shall be no restriction on the interstate and intrastate movement. Moving on, three terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Jaisre Mohammed terror group were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. It was the second encounter in a district in the last 24 hours. On Tuesday, two terrorists were killed in a similar gunfight in trial area of Pulwama. This comes as last week's security forces successfully foiled a major bombing by Pakistan-based terror groups in Pulwama after they recovered a car laden with explosives. Since the COVID-19 lockdown, more than 40 terrorists have been reportedly killed in encounters in Jammu and Kashmir. India has said a UN report on terrorism has vindicated its long-standing position that Pakistan remained the epicenter of international terrorism. According to the UN report, Pakistan-based terror groups jaish e mohammed and Lashkar-e-Taiba are engaged in trafficking fighters into Afghanistan who are threatening to derail the peace process in the war-torn country. Reacting to a UN report which claims there are 6,500 Pakistanis among other foreign terrorist fighters in Afghanistan, India on Tuesday said it vindicates the country's long-standing position that Pakistan remains the epicenter of international terrorism. In response to media queries on UN report, India's foreign ministry has expressed serious concern and asserted that UN-designated entities like lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed operating from Pakistan-controlled territories are facilitating trafficking and imparting training to other terrorists in Afghanistan. The 25th report of analytical support and sanctions monitoring team concerning ISIL or Daesh, Al-Qaeda and associated individuals and entities was submitted to the UN Security Council. The report reveals that Pakistan-based terrorist outfits play a key role in bringing foreign terrorists into war-torn Afghanistan, of which Pakistani terrorists form a significant part. <laughs> Gilgit Balistan is bearing the brunt of the lockdown imposed in the wake of the rapid spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Local residents said that authorities in the illegally occupied region have been apathetic to their sufferings and hospitals remain poorly equipped, unable to meet the needs during the pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic has triggered unemployment, poverty and destitution in Gilgit, Baltistan that has been under Pakistan's illegal occupation for over seven decades. Though the government abruptly imposed lockdown, fearing an outbreak due to poor medical facilities, residents blame that no basic amenities like masks and sanitizers have been provided to tackle the crisis. Lack of government's intervention has forced locals to voluntarily form a helping group and take the matter on their own hands in battling coronavirus. यहां पर जो है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से कोई ऐसा पुरसान हाल नहीं है जो चीजें होने चाहिए थी एक रियासत पे एक मुल्क में जो चीजें होने चाहिए थी सुलेयात का वो अभी तक यहां पर कोई मुआयना नहीं ना कोई सेनेटाइजर है ना कोई पब्लिक प्लेस में सेनेटाइजर गेट लगे हुए हैं ना कोई वो ऐसा कोई मास्क है ना सेनेटाइजर है कुछ भी नहीं यहां पर कोई पुरसान हाल नहीं है गिलगित बाल्टिस्तान रजिस्टर्ड ओवर 779 कोरोना वायरस केसेस एज ऑफ वेंसडे and the cases continue to rise. But the authorities in Gilgit Baltistan has been apathetic to the sufferings of locals. Hospitals in the region remain poorly staffed, poorly equipped and unable to meet the needs during the pandemic. Spokesperson of ruling Nepal Communist Party Narayan Kachi Shrestha has called for diplomatic dialogue over the ongoing border row with India. Shrestha, a former foreign minister, urged all parties for the escalation of the ongoing rift. The ruling Nepal Communist Party has called for diplomatic talks between Kathmandu and New Delhi to resolve the ongoing border row between India and Nepal. While speaking in the National Assembly this week, spokesperson for the ruling party and former Foreign Minister Narayan Kaji Shrestha said, Diplomacy is the first line of defense in contemporary world and called all parties for de-escalation of ongoing rift through dialogue. Diplomacy is the first line of defense. We have to do the same thing with the same thing. We have to do the 
हमारे अतिक्रमित भूमि फिर्ता पर्च Nepal recently released a revised political and administrative map of the country laying claim over Indian territories of Lipu Lake, Kalapani and Limpiadhura. On Sunday the government also tabled a constitution amendment bill in the parliament to give legal backing to the map. After its endorsement by both the houses of the parliament, the president is expected to order issuance of the bill. India's foreign ministry had earlier said such artificial enlargement of territorial claims will not be acceptable but said the country remains open for dialogue. Residents in Nepal's capital Kathmandu now wake up to the magnificent view of snow-capped Mount Everest due to the COVID-19 induced lockdown that has forced pollution levels down across the country. The stunning sight is visible for the first time in years. The nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of novel coronavirus has dramatically improved the air quality in Nepal. With over 70 days of lockdown that has forced factories to go idle, kept cars off the road and suspended most public transportation, blue skies suddenly have become a daily phenomenon and the air quality is healthier to breathe. This has ultimately lifted off curtail of smoke exhibiting far-laying snow-capped mountains. Residents in capital Kathmandu can now see the Mount Everest right from their rooftops due to the clean air. It's the first time in decades that the Himalayas can be viewed in the bustling city. Nepal has been under a nationwide lockdown since 24th of March, restricting any sort of movement across the country. Meanwhile, Nepal has extended the coronavirus induced lockdown till June 14 amid rising cases. The Himalayan nation has so far recorded 2,099 cases. Out of these, 266 have recovered and 8 have succumbed to the infection. In the latest, High Level Coordination Committee for the Prevention and Control of COVID-19 will decide in a day or two whether or not to ease the lockdown. Sri Lankan man's cricket team has returned to training as coronavirus lockdown has been eased in the country. First training after a nine-week gap took place at the cricket ground in capital Colombo on Tuesday under strict regulations laid down by the health authorities. Sri Lanka's men's national cricket team has returned to training as coronavirus lockdown has been eased in the country. First training after a nine-week break due to the coronavirus lockdown took place at the cricket ground in capital Colombo on Tuesday under strict regulations laid down by the health authorities. Accordingly, the selected squad of 13 members will undergo a 12-day residential training camp during which all will stay as a group in a hotel. When we are in Kamaru, we are going to be able to get the Mahitana Edirata. Cricket came to a halt on March 13 in Sri Lanka when the visiting England team pulled out on the second day of a four-day practice match ahead of their two test series. The test series against England was put off indefinitely after the coronavirus pandemic halted major sporting events worldwide. Sri Lanka's next international engagement is the Indian tour of the island in June-July 2020 for three one-day internationals and three T20 matches, but a decision on whether to go ahead with the tour is still pending. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Cyclone Nisarak makes landfall in India's Maharashtra coastal districts on high alert. India's Foreign Ministry says UN reports proves Pakistan is epicenter of global terrorism. And Kathmandu gets a glimpse of Mount Everest as pollution levels decrease amid lockdown. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/slash Asia Newsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at SAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.